Today I'm announcing the unsealing of a three-count indictment, charging Sean Combs with racketeering conspiracy, sex trafficking, interstate transportation for prostitution. The indictment alleges that between at least 2008 and the present, Combs abused, threatened, and coerced victims to fulfill his sexual desires, protect his reputation, and conceal his conduct. As alleged in the indictment, to carry out this conduct, Sean Combs led and participated in a racketeering conspiracy that used the business empire he controlled to carry out criminal activity, including sex trafficking, forced labor, kidnapping, arson, bribery, and the obstruction of justice. Let me say a little bit more about the charges. The indictment alleges that Combs abused and exploited women and other people for years and in a variety of ways. As alleged, Combs used force, threats of force, and coercion to cause victims to engage in extended sexual performances with male commercial sex workers, some of whom he transported or caused to be transported over state lines. Combs allegedly planned and controlled the sex performances, which he called freak-offs, and he often electronically recorded them. The freak-offs sometimes lasted days at a time, involved multiple commercial sex workers, and often involved a variety of narcotics, such as ketamine, ecstasy, and GHB, which Combs distributed to the victims to keep them obedient and compliant. As alleged, when Combs didn't get his way, he was violent, and he subjected victims to physical, emotional, and verbal abuse so that they would participate in the freak-offs, and that Combs hit, kicked, threw objects at and dragged victims, at times by their hair. On one occasion in March of 2016, that conduct was captured on video and later reported in the media. Specifically, Combs kicked, dragged, and threw a vase at a victim in a Los Angeles hotel when the victim was attempting to flee. As alleged, these assaults often resulted in injuries to the victims, which took days or weeks to heal. In addition to the violence, the indictment alleges that Combs threatened and coerced victims to get them to participate in the freak-offs. He used the embarrassing and sensitive recordings he made of the freak-offs as collateral against the victims. And the indictment alleges that he maintained control over the victims in several ways, including by giving them drugs, by giving and threatening to take away financial support or housing, by promising them career opportunities, by monitoring their whereabouts, and even by dictating their physical appearance. Because of all of this, the indictment alleges that the victims did not believe they could refuse Combs without risking their security or facing more abuse. The indictment also alleges other acts of violence undertaken by Combs and others, including violence against witnesses to his abuse, kidnapping, and arson. The indictment alleges that on more than one occasion, Combs carried or brandished firearms to intimidate and threaten victims and witnesses. Now, Combs did not do this all on his own. As I mentioned, Combs has been charged with RICO conspiracy. He used his business and employees of that business and other close associates to get his way. Those individuals allegedly included high-ranking supervisors in the business, personal assistants, security staff, and household staff. The indictment alleges that those individuals facilitated the freak-offs. They booked the hotel rooms and stocked them with the supplies, including drugs, baby oil, personal lubricant, extra linens, and lighting. When the hotel rooms got damaged, they helped clean it up. They arranged for victims and commercial sex workers to travel for the freak-offs and they delivered large quantities of cash to Combs to pay for the commercial sex workers. The indictment also alleges that they helped Combs cover up his crimes. During the March 2016 incident at the LA hotel that I mentioned earlier, a member of the hotel security staff intervened and Combs attempted to bribe the staff member with a stack of cash to make sure that what happened was kept quiet. And as the indictment alleges, in late 2023, after public allegations were made about Combs' crimes, he and others pressured witnesses and victims to stay silent 
including by making phone calls to witnesses and victims and giving them a false narrative of what they had experienced. And as alleged, Combs used others to help conceal his abuse by monitoring and preventing victims from leaving a location in order to hide their injuries or by locating and contacting a victim who had attempted to flee. As part of this investigation, in March of this year, special agents from HSI executed search warrants at Combs' residences in Miami and Los Angeles. They also executed a warrant for Combs' electronic devices. During those searches, agents seized evidence of the crimes charged in this indictment. They seized firearms and ammunition, including three defaced AR-15s and a large capacity drum magazine. They also seized evidence of the freak-offs, electronic devices that contain images and videos of the freak-offs with multiple victims. And they seized cases and cases of the kinds of personal lubricant and baby oil that Combs' staff allegedly used to stock hotel rooms for the freak-offs, more than 1,000 bottles altogether. Here are some of the items that we recovered during the searches. As you can see here, this is a drum magazine, large capacity, and it contains, I believe, 59 rounds. I mentioned as well, we recovered three AR-15s. This is a close-up shot of one of the AR-15s, and you can see right here, the serial number has been thoroughly defaced. Another picture of more ammunition and parts of two AR-15s right there. Now, I want to be clear about two things. First, this office is determined to investigate and prosecute anyone who engages in sex trafficking, no matter how powerful or wealthy or famous you may be. No one should doubt our commitment on that. A year ago, Sean Combs stood in Times Square and was handed a key to New York City. Today, he's been indicted and will face justice in the Southern District of New York. Second, we are not done. This investigation is ongoing, and I encourage anyone with information about this case to come forward and to do it quickly. Anyone with information can call 1-877-4-HSI-TIP. I want to express my deep appreciation for the victims and witnesses who have used their voices and helped bring this criminal conduct to light. We would not be here without them. I also want to thank the dedicated case agents on the HSI Trafficking in Person Squad in New York. They have been with us since day one and have worked tirelessly on this investigation. They will continue to be invaluable partners to us. I also want to thank the incredible agents and analysts from SCNY who have also provided tremendous assistance on this case. I'm deeply grateful for their continued work. And finally, I want to thank the outstanding career prosecutors from SCNY who are handling this case. Meredith Foster, Emily Johnson, Chrissy Slavic, Madison Smizer, and Mitzi Steiner, and their supervisors, Jamie Backleapter and Jacqueline Kelly. They are members of the Civil Rights Unit in our criminal division. We created the Civil Rights Unit when I became U.S. Attorney. I am deeply proud of their work on this and so many other cases. I'll now take some questions. Aaron Katursky, ABC. Thanks, Nick. Damien, thanks. The indictment describes a aggressive, open, violent, hedonistic uh, abuse that you say was recurrent and widely known. Why did it take law enforcement so long to intervene? How many women were victimized by Sean Combs and how many others were involved? Well, our investigation is ongoing. Um, we are committed to bringing justice to everyone who's been victimized by the defendant. Um, I can't tell you why it took so long. I think the, the, the better focus is on the fact that we are here today. Um, and we are committed to making sure that justice is done. Next question. Thank you. Julia Ainsley, NBC. Thank you for doing this. You said we are not done and that Combs did not do this alone. Do you foresee that there could be other charges related to this case? I'm not taking anything off the table. Janet Fisher, Newsday. Yeah. What's the difference between the uh, sex trafficking and uh, promoting travel for the 
uh, purpose of prostitution? Well, there are different crimes with different elements. I don't um, think we should get into the, the nitty-gritty of the legal discussion right now, but um, the, the, the sex trafficking, we believe, they're all serious offenses, but the sex trafficking um, uh, conduct um, carries some significant penalties, and, uh, and, and we are gratified that we were able to bring that charge. Is one more coercive than the other? I'm not going to be able to get into that, but, but you can look it up, and, and, and yes, sex trafficking, especially when it involves coercion or force, um, is, is a very serious crime, and it carries significant penalties. Good afternoon, Darla Miles, ABC7 New York. Thank you for this press conference and for the details. Two questions. Um, in context of this indictment and the information that was presented to the grand jury, are you able to clarify the number of victims? It's mentioned plural in the indictment, but can you specify the number of victims just for this particular indictment? And secondly, can you provide details about the alleged arson? Um, unfortunately, I'm not able to provide either. Um, the number of victims, um, you are correct. They, we are intentional in saying multiple. Um, uh, the details of the arson incident um, are limited to what we have in the indictment and also the detention letter that we filed, that, um, which contains more details than the indictment does at various points. Um, but we don't have anything more beyond that. Next question. Lynn Tran, CNN. Um, are any of his accomplices or uh, associates under investigation? And additionally, could he face any more charges? So the investigation is ongoing. That means both as to him and to anyone else who we believe uh, committed the crime uh, with him. Next question. Julia Papa. Hi, good morning from 1010 Winds. Uh, any indication that some of the women or victims here were imprisoned in his residences? And did he have locations where he kept them? And did they were not allowed to leave? And uh, also, uh, he's indicted here, although there were searches and raids in L.A., Miami. Why in New York? Well, um, I'm, I'm biased. I'm the U.S. attorney in the Southern District of New York. I think that we um, have an outstanding track record of bringing some of the most impactful, sprawling, complex, difficult um, sex trafficking, uh, human trafficking, labor trafficking, you name it. Um, the Southern District of New York can do it, and so we're very proud of that. And so the scope and complexity of this investigation isn't something that we ran from, it's something that we embrace, and we will continue to do that. Um, as to your question about whether he imprisoned anyone, um, all I can say is that, you know, I mentioned this March 2016 incident where something was caught on video where a victim was attempting to flee, um, and there was violence that was associated with it. Was that at the residence or a hotel? Um, that was at a hotel. Matthew Lee, Inner City Press. Thanks a lot. Does your office intend to, to seek remand? Or are you reaching a bail package? And if you're willing, can you, how would you contrast this with the R. Kelly case in, in EDNY in terms of the elements? Thanks. So um, we will be seeking detention. We have filed a letter um, laying out our reasoning uh, for seeking pretrial detention. Um, I'm not going to be able to expand beyond what's in the letter, but it contains um, all of the reasoning and it contains uh, the law as well. Um, there is a presumption of detention in a case like this, and we think that's warranted. John Anise, New York Daily News. Thank you. Um, I was hoping to get some more detail about the uh, searches of his residence, um, the, the uh, guns, the, the cases of lubricant, and the videos. Where were they found amongst his residence? Were they all scattered around the houses in one place? I kind of wanted to just get a better picture of, um, of how that stuff was found. Well, look, I, I think that some of the details um, that you're seeking are in the detention letter. So, for instance, um, some of the, the, the AR-15s, two of the three defaced AR-15s were found in his bedroom closet in Miami, um, broken down into parts along with magazines um, with ammunition uh, loaded in them. So um, some, of the, some of that detail is in the detention letter. Beyond that, I'm not going to be able to get into uh, where other items were, were stored. Ben Kochman, Post. Hey, thanks for uh, doing this. Um, your office um, was the office that uh, had been prosecuting uh, Jeffrey Epstein uh, before he uh, died uh, in custody. Um, I, I have not read your detention memo yet. It's the first thing I'm going to do uh, after this ends. But does, it, does, the, does the memo address or is your office concerned with, uh, with Combs' safety in custody 
given, um, given what happened with Ep Epstein? So we are concerned with anyone's safety whenever they are um, detained prior to trial. It's part of our obligations to keep people um, safe as well. Um, it's part of the criminal justice system. So, um, but I do not draw any sort of connection between um, Jeffrey Epstein's suicide and um, what may or may not happen um, to any other defendant while they are um, detained pretrial. And of course, the decision whether to um, detain the defendant will be up to a judge. Our position is that pretrial detention is warranted under the law and based on the facts of this case, um, and I'll leave it at that. Are, are some of the prosecutors on this case uh, some of the same prosecutors that had been uh, handling that or, or that worked on the Maxwell case? So um, I'm not going to get into the, 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 the staffing. I will say that this team, this group of, 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 of AUSAs, this incredible um, group has been working on this case around the clock, um, and they've had their hands full. Next question. Gus Rosendale, uh, NBC News. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, Combs' attorney said uh, that his client has been cooperative with investigators. He said that this morning. I was wondering if you would have a reaction to that. Um, I, let me just say this. I think that um, generally uh, and in, with increasing frequency, the, the word cooperative or cooperating has taken on tremendous elasticity and it no longer really bears any relation to what um, uh, the word means when we use it um, in a very specific context. So um, uh, responding to lawful process um, and the like um, does not qualify as cooperation when we use that term here. Mike Sisak, AP. Thanks. To that end, uh, was there any discussion of Mr. Combs surrendering? I understand he was taken into custody at a hotel in Manhattan last night and maybe that wasn't the plan. Can you elaborate on, on how that came about and why that was? I'm not going to be able to get into any sort of operational um, details as to how he was taken into custody and when um, he is in custody right now. He will be appearing in court later today. Was there any discussion of him surrendering given, you know, they claim he's cooperating? I'm not going to be able to get into law enforcement tactics um, or operations. Well, um, I can't get into the charging decision. It, it is very meaningful to us that weapons uh, were possessed, um, as we allege in the indictment. Um, uh, you know, part of the reason why this conduct was so um, uh, pervasive and um, and harmful was because victims and others didn't necessarily feel comfortable um, denying him his wishes, as we allege, um, because of the presence of, of, of firearms. Um, I'll, I should leave it there. Thanks. Last question, Jacob Shamison. Jacob Shamsian, Business Insider. Thank you. Um, given that he's the sole defendant in this case and that you allege he's part of a conspiracy that involves members of his companies, do you anticipate a superseding indictment um, at, that uh, bring allegations against um, other members of his companies or other co-conspirators as well? I, again, I can't take anything off the table. Anything is possible. Our investigation is very active and ongoing. And I think a lot of you who cover this office know that when we say such things, um, that developments um, uh, are certainly foreseeable, um, but I cannot predict them sitting here today. All right, thank you, everyone. Thank you. What part of the business empire goes to forfeiture? Thank you.